The biggest mistake that swimmers make is not doing a proper warm up before dry land and also before going into the pool for a swim. So whether you're going to the pool, open water, or doing dry land, it's super important that you do a dynamic warm up before you get in the water and then you do a static stretch after you do your workout. Now in this video, I'm gonna share with you five of the biggest mistakes that swimmers are making when they do dry land activities. We're gonna start out with a very basic warm up, and I'm gonna show you guys a few different examples of some different dynamic and static stretching that you can do before and after you get in the pool. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with some light jumping jacks, and the idea here is to get the heart rate warmed up before I do any activity. It should feel pretty easy. The modified version of this is simply stepping just to get your body, your lower body, and your upper body, the muscles activated, and the blood flowing. After you've got your heart rate up, whether it was doing jumping jacks or jogging in place, you're gonna to start to do some arm circles. I love arm circles. This gets your shoulders nice and warm. So you're gonna go five circles forward small, and then we're gonna go five in reverse small. After we go five small in reverse, we're gonna go five medium size forward. Now again, you can do this dry land warm up before you get in the pool. It's a great way to warm up the shoulders. We're gonna go five in reverse, and then we're gonna go five large circles forward and then five big in reverse. Now the idea here is to get the blood flowing so that way we don't hit the water or hit the dry land activity cold. Now we're gonna go five reverse. And remember, anytime you're doing dry land, you wanna make sure you're, you're tailoring the experience to your specific skill level. So if you have any injuries, you wanna make sure you're modifying. So as you can see here, I'm just getting my arm swings going. So I'm getting my shoulders nice and activated. I don't wanna hold the specific pose, because that's not what I want to do. I want to increase my performance in the dry land or in the swim. So right now, rather than holding my arm like this, this is a static stretch, we're doing a dynamic stretch. And you can see now I'm going to transition to doing dynamic tricep extensions. These are all listed in the MySwim Pro app. So if you want to follow a workout in the MySwim Pro app, you can do a dry land workout just like the one that I'm doing. So right now I'm doing tricep extensions dynamic. This is the static version of that. We don't want to do that. We want to be dynamic. So we want to be swinging our arms. We want to get the blood flowing. Now the, the hamstring version of this, if you're thinking, how do I warm up my lower body? It's actually, you can hold something. Right now I'm out here in the open area, nothing to hold, but basically use your balance and you're just going to swing your leg and you're trying to keep your legs straight. So rather than holding a hamstring stretch, we're trying to get the dynamic movement and go ahead and try and touch your toe if you can. And then you're gonna go five to 10 on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep warming up my hamstring. That was good enough, you get the idea. And what you can do, you can start to open up your legs. Now, rather than just going to down and holding a specific pose, that's what we do after the workout. Instead, we wanna be dynamic. So maybe you're gonna have your arms swinging like this, and then we're gonna continue. Last cycle here with our arms, we wanna get our arms nice and loose, our shoulders, Arm is dangling, we're gonna go five circles. Then we're gonna go counterclockwise, five circles. Just kind of get the blood flow. We don't wanna hold a specific movement. We just wanna get the blood flow. Notice how I'm leaning on my knee, so that way I'm getting more support. I'm not straining my lower back. Just kind of work my arm, get things warmed up. And that's the first biggest mistake swimmers make is not doing a dynamic warm up. Let's go to number two. The second biggest mistake that swimmers make in dry land is having poor technique. Just like in the pool, you have to have proper fundamentals. So I'm gonna show you three different movements. We're gonna do push-ups, squats, and planks. And I'm gonna show you the correct and incorrect version and some things that you wanna keep an eye out for when you're doing this specific movement. When you do a push-up, you wanna position your hands right underneath your shoulders. And if you are going to go on your knees, that's fine. Just make sure that you keep your back as flat as possible. If you notice right now, I'm on a yoga mat. It makes it a lot easier for both your hands, your knees, and your feet. So if you can do that, I highly recommend it. But let's say we're gonna go a traditional push-up. We're gonna go on our toes, on the balls of our feet. We have our hands right underneath our shoulder. We wanna make sure our back is flat. And this is the pr improper technique. If you notice, my back is really arching or my butt is really high. Both of these are not good. We wanna have a nice neutral body position just like we're doing streamline in the water. And when we come down, we wanna make sure that our body is straight all the way down and all the way up. Whether you do a push up that's narrow grip or a wider grip as you see here, you wanna make sure that your back is coming down absolutely flat and then you come up in one smooth movement. The second movement we're gonna look at is squats. So when you're doing a squat, it's really important that you position your feet just outside the width of your shoulders and you wanna lean back. So you wanna keep your chest up. And let me turn so you guys can see the side view. So I've got my knees 
right over my, right over my feet. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to have my knees lean forward as I go down. Instead, I want my butt to come back, chest is up, try and keep my back as flat as possible. And as I come down, like I'm sitting in a chair, I'm going to keep my knees behind my toes. If my knees go in front of my toes, that's improper technique. It's putting a lot of stress on my knees and that's not the right way to do a squat. So I'm going to go ahead, position my feet and based on your strength level and flexibility, you may or may not be able to go that far down. But you want to make sure you keep your hips back and lean, 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 lean. And if you can only go this far, that's fine. Some people go all the way down to the ground and that's great. It's based on your flexibility and strength level. Just make sure your knees don't go forward. If you want to do something with your hands, you can put your hands out here. You can put them across your chest like this. You can put them behind your bed, <laughs> not behind your head, but behind your head. Uh, whatever it takes to make sure your back is flat. You don't want to stress either direction. So let's go ahead and try a couple. I like my hands like this. We're going to go down and then we'll go down to about 90 degrees and then we're going to come up and that's the proper squat technique. The third movement I want to show you guys is the plank. A few different versions of this, similar to the push-up. It's all about your body position. Just like in the water, it's so important to keep your body position stable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on my hands. You can also do this on your elbows. So I have my hands positioned right under my shoulders. And when I do a plank, I want to make sure that my body is flat. If you notice from my shoulders all the way to my heels, you could take a wood log or a PVC pipe and I'm trying to make my body as flat as possible. Now most of you will do this inside of a gym or maybe in your house and you can use a mirror. Right now I have no mirror to evaluate myself, but you guys let me know how I'm doing. We don't want to be sagging. This is improper plank technique. This is also improper plank technique. It's a little exaggerated. What happens is as you fatigue, you go from a really good technique and then you start to sag as you get tired. So it's really important that you hold it together, whether you're doing it on your elbows like this or you're doing it on your side like this. So whether you're doing it on your side, on your hand, or on your elbows, you want to make sure your body is flat, your torso is open, and if you're doing it on your side, your hands are pointing to the ceiling, to the sky, neutral head position. Before we get into the third biggest mistake that swimmers make in dry land, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Zelios. Zelios makes awesome hair and skincare products that are designed to stand up to intense physical demands of workouts and competitions. Our team has tested out a few of their products and they're definitely worth the hype. The zinc based sun barrier sunscreen is SPF 50 and it actually goes on clear. It's reef safe and stays put too, so you don't have to worry about getting it in your eyes during a workout. The swim and sport body wash and swim and sport conditioner both help remove chlorine, sweat and salt after a swim and they're sulfate free, so they won't strip your hair or skin of its natural oils. The body wash is great for preventing itchy skin, which I think every swimmer has experienced. The conditioner is safe for all types of hair and it helps restore moisture to keep your hair nice and healthy. Zelios also makes shampoo, anti-shave cream for race day, and a recovery gel to soothe sore muscles. Every product is tested by the world's top athletes so you know it's legit. Definitely check out Zelios if you need to restock your swim bag. Head over to the link in the description to get 20% off your order with the code MYSWIMPRO. All right, let's get back into the dry land. The third biggest mistake in dry land that swimmers make is not allowing your body to recover, overtraining. Now it's so important that you moderate your workouts with both aerobic, anaerobic, and also giving your body the time it needs to recover. Overtraining is so common, and I've personally experienced this where you break your body down, you're working so hard, you're trying to improve, and sure enough, your body just can't take it anymore. So it's so important to make sure you're foam rolling, stretching, and doing everything you can, whether it's getting more sleep, making sure you're nutritious, you're eating a nutritious and balanced diet, and you're staying hydrated. Now I wanna show you guys a few static stretches. In the beginning of the video, I showed you dynamic stretches that you do before you do a swim or dry land. Now I'm gonna show you a few static stretches. So the first one I alluded to in the beginning of the video is where you take your arm, your arm is going to be absolutely straight and you're just gonna hold it right across your body and you wanna maintain your arm parallel to the surface, to the ground, and that way we're gonna hold the stretch right across the shoulder and this is something great to do after your swim or your dry land. So we're gonna hold that for about 20 to 30 seconds, then we're gonna switch over to the other side. Now if you guys remember, uh, one of the uh, dynamic stretches that I did was swinging my arms like this. This is called a dynamic uh, 
tricep extension. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna hold that. I'm gonna rotate, you guys can see the stretch. So I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna grab my elbow and I'm gonna pull it in. I want my fingertips to extend down and this is based on your flexibility to see how far you can go. But you're gonna try and hold this for 20 to 30 seconds each side. And this is something great to do after you swim. Now if you notice, I'm talking right now, but when you guys do this, you wanna be breathing. You wanna inhale through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. It's really important to breathe because when you breathe, when you're doing any kind of static stretch, you're basically circulating all of that oxygenated blood and you wanna make sure that you are allowing your body everything possible to recover. The only way you can do that is if you're breathing. If you're not breathing, it's not gonna work. Here's another activity that you can do that's a great dynamic, uh, not dynamic, static stretch, where you're gonna open up your legs just like in the beginning and we're just gonna lean forward with our chest. We're gonna start to stretch the hamstring. Now, based on your flexibility, you may or may not be able to touch the ground. If you can, go ahead and rest on the ground, maybe even pull yourself down. And one stretch I love doing is where you actually reach out across and point your fingers to the ceiling or to the sky and you try and look at your fingers. You're gonna feel a stretch across your groin and your hamstring, hold that for 20 or 30 seconds, and then you're gonna reach over to the other side, 20 or 30 seconds. These are just a few different movements that are dynamic in the pre-swim pre or pre-lift, and then you can do them static post-workout. And it's really important that you breathe through all of these activities. And like I said, if you wanna follow along a structured workout for dry land or for swimming, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app because we guide you through every step of the way. So if you're not sure which exercise you should be doing, so we take care of everything, whether it's how to warm up, how to do the main set, and how to cool down as well. The fourth biggest mistake that swimmers are making in their dry land training is not doing swimming specific movements. Now it's one thing to go to the gym, pump the iron, hit the bench press, get ripped. It's another thing to build swimming specific strength out of the water. So I'm gonna show you a few different exercises that work not only on swimming specific strength, but also injury prevention. Because in swimming, you're really training your body in ways unlike anything else. You're doing repetitive motions with your arms and your shoulders. You might move your arms you know, 10,000 times in the course of one week. Most other sports and activities, you won't have that kind of repetitive motion and strain. So here's one activity that I love doing. It's great for your core. We already did a plank. What we're actually gonna do is called scapular dips. So this is a great way to stabilize and strengthen the area, not only in the rotator cuff, but the surrounding region in your back that supports your arm. Basically, the way your arm is connected to the rest of your body. So the way you do this is you find a plank position and you're basically just gonna hold the plank and you're going to keep your back as flat as possible and you're gonna lower yourself and then raise yourself. So I'm coming down, I'm lowering myself, but keeping my back flat and I'm gonna push up. So I'm not bending my elbows to come down or up. Instead, I'm focusing on my scapular muscle in my back, and this is a supporting region for your shoulder. So do that 20 times, three rounds, or you can do this on your elbows. So if you do it on your elbows, it's the same thing. Keep your back as flat as you can. You're gonna sink down, and then you're gonna push up. Sink down, and then you're gonna push up. And that's a really specific swimming activity that you can do to strengthen your scapular. Now it's really important to do these activities on a regular basis, because if you do this once, it's not really gonna have much of an impact. The fifth mistake that swimmers are making, both in dry land and in swimming, is not being consistent and not sticking with a plan. If you go to the gym and you hit the bench press once or twice, you're not gonna see any gains, you're just gonna get sore, maybe it'll fluff your ego. Same thing applies in the pool. If you go swim once or twice, or even three times over any period of time, you're not gonna see results. What you need to do is you need to stick with a plan. And I will tell you, in dryland training, it's just as important as in swim training. Having the structure, having the guidance is critical. So whether you have an iPhone or an Android, you have to check out the My Swim Pro app because it will provide for you a structured dryland training program that's delivered by My Swim Pro Coach and it's incorporated into a swimming program. So if you're looking for that swim program and you want dryland included, you have to check out the My Swim Pro app. If you guys enjoyed this specific video, you're going to love this video where I talk about the 10 best dryland exercises for swimmers. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And I'm actually gonna take screenshots and I'm gonna answer them with a video response on my other channel, My Swim Pro Community. That's gonna be the first pinned comment linked down below. So make sure you check that out. Also, thanks again to today's video sponsor. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what questions you have down below and happy swimming. Bye.